So a long time ago, I got really, really into climbing. An addiction that has not faded. If you subscribe and have seen my other videos, this should come as no surprise. So along with that, as a creative person, I was pretty enamored by climbing holds you see in the gym. They almost are like little pieces of art with an ergonomic form and a practical use. So I started sculpting and making my own holds through a lot of trial and error until I found a pretty good pipeline to output holds of my own. So I decided to create a series of videos showing the start to finish process I use for DIY climbing holds. Unfortunately that consisted of five videos, each close to twice as long as this one, and I know a lot of people these days don't have a long attention span or at least don't have a lot of free time to burn. So like I've done with other long videos like my home climbing wall build, I figured I should do a cut down of those videos for you before I forget, <clears throat> like I already did. But I'm finally posting this now, please forgive me. So where to start? Well, first you need to realize that there are lots and lots of options when it comes to making holds. So you need to figure out what's best for you. I break that down further in the other videos, but in the end, I decided to make polyurethane holds. Yep, the same holds you find in gyms. That decision didn't really have a functional reason, but again, watch those videos if you are curious as to why. The next step was to shape the holds. You need some type of substrate to start with that will give you both the form and the texture of the final hold. On a budget, readily available floral foam is a good place to start. Just to note, some of the materials and tools will be linked in the description for your convenience. Speaking of which, anything that can remove material is a good tool for carving. From knives to sandpaper to rasps, it all can be useful even just using your hands. I wanted some holds that served a specific climbing purpose, but also felt like they belonged in a set together and were aesthetically pleasing. So these shapes consisting of parallel curved lines that converge and branch out around the holds are where I ended up. Next, I had to create the bolt holes. I opted for a drill press to ensure that they were straight, but there are other ways mentioned in the full videos. Just make sure that they are a diameter that will accept your climbing bolts. Now they kind of look like climbing holds, but they aren't. These will explode into a billion pieces if you try to climb on them. Don't do that. So we have to make molds of these so we can cast the poly holds. The first step is to make a mold box around the foam shape. This can be accomplished with any non-porous material. On a DIY budget, I use the laminated side of cereal boxes. They work just great. And yep, I like my protein enriched cereal. Mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. Next, you need to mix together a fast curing liquid silicone for the molds. You can find these at some hobby and art stores or in the description of this video. Some of the mold and hold making materials I have affiliate links for that give you a one time 10% discount if you use the code SENSTORY10, all one word. So feel free to check that out and make the best of your 10% off. This is a two part mixture. The one I have is a 10 to 1, but follow the instructions on the product you use carefully. You don't want to screw this part up. These products have a fairly low viscosity that allows them to flow all around your shape to capture the texture before curing. Please note that due to this property, you need to ensure the mold box is sealed properly or else you will make a huge mess and waste your money. The molds are actually the most expensive part of making a hold. You might also notice that there is a platform I have built especially for making holds. This makes both the mold making and casting process way, way easier. After your molds are all cured up, usually 24 hours to be safe, 
you get to destroy your hard work by pulling apart the mold boxes and shapes to free the mold. Be free, my friend! You can see why you want your molds to turn out right here. Your shapes get obliterated. Now we get to pour the actual holds. Yay, the moment everyone's been waiting for. The resin is also a two-part mixture. This time, the one I'm using is a one-to-one -one ratio. A lot harder to f uh, screw up. Again, there's a discount code for the resin as well. You can also add some dye-in at this stage if you want to be artsy. You can even do funky swirl patterns and multicolor pores, but I ain't that cool, so just this tealish, greenish, bluish color for me. Now just wait a few minutes, literally it just takes a few minutes, so move fast and don't let this cure before you've poured it. Anyhow, minutes later, ta-da, cured. Now the moment we've truly been waiting for, demolding. There is something super satisfying about popping out holds. But wait, there's more. Not really a step, but part of quality assurance should be testing the holds out, no? So I decided not to sleep for a month and put together a super weird and over the top video about setting a problem and testing them out. So go check that out if you wanna see something wacky, I guess. Anyhow, that's it. Climbing holds, boom. Obviously, it's impossible to get any real level of detail in this short amount of time, so I apologize for consistently plugging the other videos. But if you want more details or have any questions, please head over to those, probably linked somewhere here, for all of the deets. Alright, so that's it. Take it easy, and have fun. <laughs>